Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer do-it-yourself upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot a razor blade gaming laptop that's not turning on. Either it's completely dead with no signs of life or very little signs of life. Maybe just some lights going on, uh, but nothing's coming up on the screen. The fan's not turning on and staying on. Uh, if there are any noises, they're shutting off right away. I'll show you how to troubleshoot that in this video. As always guys, please remember to like and share if this video is helpful, if you think it could help someone else. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer tutorials. Also, if you have any questions, please check out the FAQs below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer. I do try to keep those updated. Uh, if you need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free. I try to get to those at least a couple times a day. For those of you that want to support the channel a little further and leave a donation, I'll show you how you can do that at the end of the video. So here I have my razor blade laptop. We're going to open it up. First thing you're going to do here, unplug the computer, get that power adapter out, and then press and hold your power button uh, for up to 30 seconds, possibly a minute. Uh, see if the computer turns on that way. Some of you, maybe uh, 9, 10% of you, your computer will turn on this way. Try that out first. The next step we're going to do, guys, is a power discharge procedure on your boards, specifically your motherboard. What happens sometimes is various components on your boards will build up power that aren't supposed to build up power, uh, definitely not build up power to a certain extent. So we're going to try to release that power from your boards. We're going to unplug your computer and we're going to remove your battery. I'll show you how to get into the battery on your razor blade laptop now. Keep in mind, before going into your computer, you want to make the environment as safe as possible to not damage anything. As you'll notice in my video, my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. An anti-static pad or an anti-static bracelet are really good ideas to stop static from damaging components in your computer. If you guys need any suggestions on any tools or supplies that I use in my shop, uh, check out the link above. It'll be a link to my Amazon store. It'll show you some suggestions on things I use that you may want to use for your project. All right, guys, so I have my computer flipped over, turned off, obviously. Uh, charger is unplugged. Um, I have it also sitting on an anti-static pad. Okay, so this razor, as most razors, it doesn't use a Phillips or a flathead. It uses a hex driver. This is an extremely small hex driver. So I have four screws on the top, two on the sides, another four screws on the bottom. I'm going to go around and take all those off. Keep in mind with some models, these rubber feet here, uh, they have screws under them in some models. So if you can't get it easily off after you take off the visible screws, pry these up very gently. They're held down by double-sided tape, so you're not going to ruin anything. Pry it up gently, see if there's screws under there, or look for a, uh, a teardown video on your exact model. Also guys, these screws here, they're at kind of an angle. They're not straight down 90 degrees. They're at an angle pointing into the computer. So just keep that in mind when you're taking it off and when you're putting the screws back, you don't want to strip it or ruin your threading trying to put it in at, at a wrong angle. Okay, so all my screws are out. I'm gonna take a small flat metal pry tool, put it here on the seam and try to gently pop that up. Okay, that came up very easily. Let's just make sure. Okay, so that came up very easily. There are no components attached to it. Very easy, I like this model. Okay, so there's the inside of your razor. There's your battery along the bottom. There's your RAM. Uh, there's your solid state drive. Your two fans, your heat sink assembly going over your CPU and your GPU. Um, this is generally what you're gonna be seeing here. So to get at your battery, there's a piece of tape holding it here. I'm gonna take my uh, plastic pry tool. As often as you can use plastic, use plastic uh, so as not to damage anything. I'm gonna take that tape up very gently. Whenever there's tape, it's usually there for a reason. So try to save it. After the repair is done, we kind of want to put the, that tape back down where we got it from. But this cord that runs out of the side here, I'll, I'll zoom in a little for you. Okay, so this battery cable runs out here inside that fitting around there and plugs into the motherboard here. This is a very standard plug. I'm going to take my fingernails or some plastic pry tools, put it on either side of the plug and just pull it out of that plug. Don't pull by the wire ever. Uh, the wire can come out of the plug. We want the wire and the plug staying together, but just coming out of that. So we're just gonna, so we're gonna put a fingernail on either side, 
which I can't get my finger down there, so I'm going to pull that edge out, then I'm going to push this edge out, then that edge out, then this edge out, kind of walk it out, little wiggle, there we go. So that takes your battery up. And that's how you would unplug your battery. Okay, so after removing your battery, after unplugging your charger, you're going to press and hold your power button for one minute to drain that power from your computer. After pressing and holding the power button for one minute, what we're going to do is plug in your charger, leave the battery out, and try to turn on your computer. If your computer turns on, it could have just been a power buildup issue. Put the battery back in, see if your computer runs like normal. If you have to do this though without the battery to get your computer started over and over, you may want to look at getting a new battery. Something's wrong with your battery. Now this goes the reverse way too. If you try starting your computer and it doesn't start, then we're going to unplug your charger, your battery's already out, press and hold the power button for another minute, clean it all out again, and then this time put your battery back in, leave the charger unplugged, and try to turn on your computer. And the same thing applies with your charger. It could be just a power buildup issue, or if you have to do this every time with your charger unplugged, something's wrong with your charger, consider replacing your charger. Now the way I showed to get at your Razer battery is typical with a lot of Razer models. However, not all models are the same. If you have a question on your specific model and how to get at your battery, maybe it wasn't just like the one seen here, leave me a comment, I'll try to help you out. If that test hasn't found the issue and your computer still isn't starting, we're gonna test your RAM now, see if that could be the issue. These are your RAM sticks here. They're held in a very typical way for a, a laptop. Um, they're held in by two metal pry arms on each side. The way to get those up is to gently pull those pry arms apart and the ram stick pops up. Like that. And then the ram stick will just slide out. As you notice, there's a long port and a short port. That means your ram can't be plugged in that way. It, it has to go in the correct way. To get your ram stick back in, just put it in there, make sure it's flush, and then press down, snap it in place, and those pry arms will click and it'll be secure. Just like that. So now that you know how to access your RAM and remove it, we're going to test RAM this way. We're going to remove one stick of RAM. Uh, try starting your computer. After you remove that, plug your battery back in. Uh, put your bottom case on. J just to keep from damaging anything, flip your computer over, try to start your computer. If your computer starts up, it means that most likely this RAM stick is bad. Um, may maybe consider replacing it. If your computer does not start up, then we're going to switch it. We're going to take this RAM out. We're going to put that RAM back in and then do it again. Plug your battery back in, flip your computer over, try to start it. If it doesn't start your computer again, now we've tried each RAM, but we're going to try each RAM in each port. So this RAM has been tried in that port. We're going to flip it over, try it in this one. And then if that doesn't work, we'll take the other RAM stick and we'll try it in this port. So basically you're trying each RAM stick by itself and in each port to see if the RAM is the issue. If the RAM test hasn't found the issue either, then we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at your BIOS. Um, not all computers have what's called a CMOS battery, but that's the component on a motherboard that's supposed to keep power to BIOS even when your computer's off. If there's something wrong there, that could stop your computer from starting up. Since this Razer that I'm using didn't have a CMOS battery, but I still want to show you that procedure, I'll show it to you on another motherboard that does have a CMOS battery, so at least you know what it looks like when you go inside your computer to try to find it. So this is your CMOS battery. It's a little round component here. It looks like a watch battery inside. It's wrapped in black electrical tape, and it plugs into a port. Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. All you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. A little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in, and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're gonna to wanna to push this battery back and up. Be very careful though, because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off, then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up, like that. 
and it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down into place. If at this point the computer is still not turning on and it's kind of bricked at this point, uh, if you want to keep troubleshooting, there's some smaller things that we can look at, namely your charger, um, your power jack. We can start identifying specific components that could actually be faulty. I'll have a link up top, also down below in the description, on how you can test your charger if you have the equipment. If not, again, it'll be in my Amazon store, suggestions for that type of equipment. There'll also be a link up top, also below in the description, how you can test a power jack to see if it's actually taking the power from the adapter and getting it to your motherboard correctly. Other things you can look at at this point is a faulty power button. Uh, maybe replace that, check it for damage, reseed it, unplug it, plug it in. Um, also, there's a lot of other components that could be shorting out at this point, stopping your computer from turning on. In my shop, if I had gone through all these steps and I couldn't find the cause of this computer not turning on, at that point, I would remove the motherboard, I would hook it up to power without anything else, and try getting it to turn on, trying to get those fans to start, trying to get uh, a signal coming out of the, of the LCD port, maybe on an external monitor, because what can happen sometimes is a USB port, an LCD cable, a touchpad, anything could be wrong, uh, broken, shorting out, and preventing the computer from turning on. So at this point, I would strip away one component at a time and try to get the computer to turn on, see if there's anything that's shorting out um, of course, you would look and see first if there's any visual damage. If, uh, if your touchpad cable is, is burned to a crisp, or if your USB board is burned, it could possibly be shorting out. So this is the troubleshooting method you would use all these steps, hopefully the easier stuff at the beginning, so you don't have to go component by component. Uh, but that's the troubleshooting method you would use for a computer that's not turning on. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped you identify what's going wrong. If you need any help with the troubleshooting process or the next troubleshooting step after you've done some, uh, check out the FAQs again. I try to keep those updated with questions people commonly have uh, problems with. If you need to leave me a question or comment again, I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And again, if you wanted to donate to the channel, support it a little more, I'll show you how you can do that now. First, right below the video to the right-hand side, you'll see the Super Thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your Cash App. Find me at dollar sign PC Helper. You can leave a dollar amount, and you can even leave a little note.